Thanks, Phil, and uh, really happy to get the chance to uh, talk to everyone here today. And uh, you know, it's exciting because Korea, for us, really was in some sense the cradle of the technology that we developed that uh, powers all the 3G around the world. And so to talk to you today about how uh, mobile broadband really can stimulate economic growth and innovation, uh, and it's just very appropriate to be here to have that conversation. So if we think about the, the way the phone has evolved over time, it's sort of something that we just accept inherently that a phone has gone from being something that we just held up to our head and made voice calls with, then we started making text messages with them. And, but if you look at it today, it's really this much more rich experience about computing, uh, entertainment, productivity, all of these kinds of things that you can do with mobile broadband. And so for us to be able to kind of drive along that uh, in conjunction with partners, it's been a great, great experience. I think we really are at the beginning of, of a lot of new opportunities. But, sorry. The nice thing uh, for us, we've built the business model, so just quickly about us, um, where we sell the chips that go inside the phones and we create the wireless technology and we license the technology. And we then sell that technology and chips to manufacturers who sell to the wireless operators and finally onto the consumer. And then the money sort of flows back to do the R&D. But the model is really nice because it's allowed us to invest very early into new areas of technology. And when we think about the wireless internet today, you know, we were putting the internet into cell phones in the early 90s, and it really didn't turn out until the 2000s that, uh, that it became a mainstream thing. But because we have this licensing business, we're able to actually create a business out of that, even when it takes a little bit longer for these things to come to market, and we can continue to build on it. So the business model is very, very focused on innovation, we're also focused on execution, meaning that we try and hit our schedules very tightly, get the, when we bring out a new technology, to let people know it's uh, still not working. I'm too tall. Uh, to let, to, uh, when we bring out a new technology, to make sure that we hit our performance. Uh, and also that uh, to be a very good partner, because we don't sell directly, we sell through other people. So. The reason why the business has grown the way it has, uh, and the reason why I'm so excited to be part of the industry, uh, it really is not hype. This is the largest platform, uh, technology platform that mankind's created. And the reason why I say that is because its scale is absolutely enormous. There's over five billion people around the world who have access to wireless technology today. Think about the reach of that and the opportunities that that creates for transforming people's lives. And I'm going to talk to you a bit about that today. But even more importantly is mobile broadband. Uh, so over a billion people now are using 3G technologies which do more than just voice and text and a little bit of data. They actually provide megabit kind of speeds to a device that somebody carries around. And as we look forward, we see that that's going to continue to grow. So the projections are that 2.8 billion people will be using mobile broadband technologies, a 3G variety that, uh, that we helped pioneer uh, by 2014. So really spectacular growth in, uh, in the market. And like I said, it, it creates this tremendous opportunity. And because we're here at the G20, just focusing in on the G20 countries, you can see the statistics. I mean, the growth rates continue to be enormous. It's uh, even in the face of some of the economic difficulties we've seen around the world, people continue to buy smartphones and use wireless data and the data traffic continues to, to go very heavily. And we sometimes might just intuitively associate mobile broadband with the developed markets. But in fact, if you look next year, the projections are that half of the shipments of 3G devices are going to go to the emerging markets. And uh, that, you know, that really has the opportunity to bridge a digital divide. Uh, clearly, cost is very important there. Uh, it's actually changed our R&D uh, philosophy where in the past people used to invest at the very high end 
create new features and those features would trickle down to the low end. And what's happened because of this emphasis on the emerging market is that it's almost bifurcated, that we invest almost as much money on R&D at the high end to create new features as we do at the low end to integrate capabilities into the chipset so it can be an extremely low cost device and therefore get $20 phones out in India that have mobile broadband in them as, a, as an example. So the emerging market I think is a tremendous story uh, and really we have the potential to change people's lives very dramatically there. And uh, so as time's gone on, the networks have continued to evolve to enable this, this mass scale and I know that many of you, you know, deal with uh, frustration sometimes when the networks get overloaded because the demand is tremendous. I mean, people are using these devices very heavily for video downloads, for access to the internet, for position locations, for all of these kinds of things which add demand to the network. And so if we look back just, uh, just in December of 2009 that data traffic on these networks now surpassed the voice traffic on the network. And if we look forward into 2014, we're going to see that one month's worth of data traffic is going to exceed the entire data traffic of 2008. So you can imagine the kind of growth that's going on here. And it's, and it's because the consumers continue to demand this technology and it's spreading, as I said, widely around the world. But one thing that I think is really interesting to me, and I think probably not something that you might have known, is that in this year, in 2010, the people who got access to broadband, broadband connections into the internet, more of them got access over mobile broadband than over fixed broadband. And you can see the stats looking forward. By 2014, 75% of, of broadband subscribers will be mobile broadband subscribers. So now we start to have to think, rethink what we thought the internet was and what it means to carry it with you and what it means to take advantage of all the capabilities that a mobile device has along with it. And in addition, so I've talked a lot about 3G, but we also have the next generation of technology coming out, uh, technology called uh, LTE. There's technologies that have also been developed in, uh, in Korea. Uh, Wibro is a technology here. But we see these things as being tied together. The fact that you'll have these higher data rate systems coming out. And by the way, they're critically uh, dependent on, on governments freeing up more spectrum for allocation to these services. That's really the main way that we're going to meet, uh, meet the demand, or at least hope in some sense to meet the demand. But you'll start to see these new networks roll out. At the same time, the 3G networks will continue to drive forward uh, very quickly because, because, of, uh, because of these data services that are on there. And the hardware also is evolving very rapidly. And I think you probably know that yourself. I mean, it may seem uh, so commonplace now to have a phone that has a camera in it. But it really wasn't that long ago that we didn't even have cameras in our phones. We didn't have color screens in our phones. And now today, you see all the kinds of things that are going into the phone, uh, you know, multimedia and different kinds of microprocessors going in there. Uh, we have focused, as I said before, on both the very high end, having incredible graphics capabilities, and on the low end, making sure that we have smartphones for the masses, for these emerging markets. Uh, and and it, the other thing that's happened is, if you've looked at the kinds of capabilities that have uh, you know, gotten into the devices, we're sort of moving back into this era where we care about how much processing goes into a phone and start talking about the the gigahertz processors and the things you used to talk about on your PC, I apologize, are coming back to the mobile phone. It probably will only be some period of time that we'll go back to forgetting about those numbers again, but it's kind of happening uh, right now. The interesting thing about it though is that when we started putting all of these capabilities into the devices, graphics capability, we thought about it in terms of people using it to play games on their phone. And what's actually happened is that these graphics capabilities have been used for things like making it easier for people to interact. I, I'm sure you all remember uh, complaining about, you know, they put so many features in these phones, I have no idea how to use it. And so the industry is really focused and led in, in large part by Apple's uh, innovations that really raised the bar for everybody 
go focus and use the graphics so that when you touch the screen, things move around very smoothly with it. And that's led to us putting a great deal of capabilities going into these devices. And so along with that, that shift, as I said, from broadband, fixed broadband to mobile broadband, a similar thing is going uh, on the device side as well. So smartphones, as you see, are, are becoming the dominant computing platform as well. So the device, the networks, all these things are really coming together to provide a fundamentally different experience for, for consumers and for enterprises. And as I said, in terms of the, the power of the computation that's going in there, it really was not very long ago that we had a very, very simple processor in the phone. And now, today, we're talking about one and a half gigahertz. And you can sort of see the curve. The curve has gone up very dramatically. And in fact, we just announced our, our results uh, uh, last week. And our results, our finances, were driven very heavily by this shift to these high-end processors and high-end devices, even in the face of the economic conditions that we see worldwide. And so, um, so I think that's a trend that if it, if, it, if it happens well in the kind of economic conditions we've been in, uh, I think it's, you know, it's going to really continue to explode as the recovery continues. Now the nice thing also is that this has attracted a lot of software development. So I talked about hardware. Software is also obviously critical. Applications are critical. And there's a broad range of operating systems here. You notice I don't have Apple on there because we're, uh, we're not in there. We're not supporting their operating system at this point. But, um, but, but what's happened is just a broad range of companies have come to, uh, come to this area, understanding that the, the dominant mode of computing going forward really is going to be around a mobile device, something that you carry with you. Sure, you'll have screens around, uh, just like you have fixed telephones, but the way that you communicate, I, I assume most of us in the room probably communicate more over a cellular phone on a wireless connection than you do on a, on a fixed line. So, so we think that's going to continue to, to go forward, and, and I think um, you know, the, the industry really is coming together. And, and if you look at the kind of creativity and energy that's going into developing applications today, really a lot of that energy is around the mobile platform. And I think uh, you know we're just getting access to new kinds of capabilities that people people never expected, and, and that's been enabled by the hardware, the software, and all of these things together. One other area that we've also focused on is the fact that you you care a lot now because you're looking at the phone rather than holding it up to your head. You care a lot about the power consumption of the display, and you also want to be.